going to be in the Gospel of Mark, Mark written by John Mark. Uh, Mark, in the Greek, the name is Katramarkon Evangelion, which means the Gospel according to Mark. And all four of the Gospels have their niche audience, you might say. Uh, the Gospel of Matthew seems to be written to the Jewish people, where Matthew goes out of his way to prove that Jesus is that Messiah that they had hoped for, that they had longed for, and that they had wanted. And John, uh, excuse me, that Matthew uses several references to Jewish culture that the Jewish people would understand. Mark, he writes in a very uh, laconical uh, way with brevity. He portrays Jesus as a person of action. And it seems that Mark is writing to the Roman world, people who would have been action-oriented. So Mark seems to be writing to the Roman world. Uh, Luke portrays the teachings and the philosophical tenets of what Jesus taught. Seems to be an appeal to the Greek, the Hellenistic world, the Hellenistic culture of his day. And John, the Jonane writer, seems to be writing to the church and with a focus on who Jesus is, both his humanity and his divinity. And you can see from the earliest times, the church has recognized there is a speciality to the four Gospels. In fact, if you study into what is called iconology, and if we would go into a more liturgical uh, church that has the various stained glass windows, you will see icons or symbols in the stained glass. You will see, um, you will see a lion, you will see a man, you will see an ox, and you will see an eagle. Now, you may recognize those as symbols of what you see in the book of Revelation, especially Revelation uh, 5, verse 6, where it says that the four living creatures, the lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle, are all bowing as they circle the lamb, that is, Jesus Christ. And in the early church, the four Gospels were typified or symbolized as Matthew, the lion, Mark the man, Luke the ox, and John the eagle. So there are some biblical historians and theologians that believe that the, that the book of Revelation is telling us, there in Revelation 5 verse 6, that the four Gospels point to the person of Jesus. That they aren't speaking of specifically some angelic beings that are in the heavens, though that may be true, but it may be telling us that the Gospels point us to Jesus. So that's not really part of the sermon, that's just kind of an extra that I threw in there, something that I was thinking and thought I would just tell you about that. That's not really part of the sermon, but it may, uh, you may find it useful, especially if you go into a Presbyterian church or a Methodist church someday and you may see those symbols in the stained glass, you'll know what they mean. So anyway, that isn't part of the sermon, but we are going to be in Mark. Mark chapter 4 is where we're going to be, and in... In Mark, Jesus, he presents several of his parables. One, the parable of the sower, the lamp under a basket, the growing seed, and the mustard seed. Now we're told that, by Mark, that Jesus preached the word of God using parables to the assembled crowd. We see that in Mark 3, I mean, excuse me, Mark 4, verse 33. We're told, with many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. And he did not say anything to them without using a parable. So the parable was one of the ways, and in this instance, the way that Jesus Christ preached the word of God to those that were assembled to hear him. Now, there are times that we, like those disciples, might hear the word of God preached and may not at first understand it or have full comprehension of it. That the sense of it might be elusive to us. And it is at those moments when we don't quite understand exactly what the Word of God is saying to us, whether it's in our times of personal prayer, or whether it's, whether it's in a church service, whenever we hear the Word of God, we may not always fully understand or grasp what it is that God is telling us, what He is speaking to us. It is in such moments that when we hear the Word of God and we don't quite understand what we're hearing or why we're hearing it, because often that will be the case, where Jesus Christ will be speaking the Word of God to us, but we may not really understand it. We might say, what does that mean? What is He trying to say to me and what is He trying to say to us? And it is in those moments 
that when we hear the Word of God and don't understand it, that we need to be alone then with our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to spend some time with Jesus in private, and we need to have Him enlarge the Word of God in our hearts and our minds as the disciples did 2,000 years ago. Remember, they were there present when Jesus gave the parables. When Jesus spoke the parables to the assembled crowd, those disciples were there. And though they were his disciples, they did not fully grasp what it was he was telling them. And you see, they had to come to Jesus. They had to come privately and be alone with Jesus. The very same is true for you and I today. We may be his disciples today, but yet when we hear the word of God preached to us, we may not fully understand what it is he's saying to us. You see, those disciples did not have a complete and full understanding, but they knew where to get it. They knew that they needed to spend time alone with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to spend time alone with our Lord in private, asking Him to enlarge our hearts and our mind as those disciples did. This asking is carried out in prayer and fellowship with Jesus, led by the Holy Spirit, who will then enlarge or expound upon what He has told us. In John 14, we see that it is the Holy Spirit who will take the Word of God, that is, those things that Jesus has said to us, and not just what He has said to us through pages of Scripture 2,000 years ago and those disciples, but each time that we are assembled and hear the Word of God preached, you see, the Holy Spirit will work to bring to mind what Jesus has said to you and to I. Because we may all hear the same word preached, but he may have something different to say to you than he has to say to me or those around us. So it is in times like this that we need to be like those disciples and come to Jesus in private and be alone with him. In John 14, verse 26, speaking of the Holy Spirit, we read, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit just doesn't bring Scripture to mind, but He brings to mind what Jesus has said to us. In other words, what was the Holy Spirit, what was the Word of God, what was Jesus Christ saying to you and I today? What was the message to you today in today's service or in your time of study or in your time of prayer, what was it that Jesus was saying to each and every one of us? The Holy Spirit will bring it to mind. That is, the Holy Spirit will lead us to come to an understanding as to what our Lord is saying to each of us. But we need to go to Jesus in private and be alone with Him, to spend time alone with Him after we hear the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will bring to mind what our Lord has spoken to us and help us to receive a much deeper meaning as he did those disciples and to receive clarification after hearing the word of God preached. <clears throat> See, the Lord preached and those disciples then spent time with him alone. In private, Jesus could say things to those disciples that he could not say to the crowd. Those that had assembled to hear the word of God. That means that there are times that Jesus can say things to you and I in our personal, private time alone with Jesus that he could not tell us here in the midst of the assembled congregation. He has things to say that are for you and for you alone, that are between you and our Lord. It is in our times alone that we receive from him those things. This being alone with Jesus also speaks to us regarding the centrality of Jesus as the means to understanding the Word of God. That is, that from Him, that is from Jesus, and by Him we receive understanding of the Scripture. That when we focus upon Christ alone, then we come to understand the Bible in an all new way. That all the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation speaks about the person of Jesus. When Jesus is our focus, then we receive insight into the written Word of God. That is, being alone with Jesus just doesn't mean spending time with Him. It means that from Him alone, 
we understand the scripture properly. It is through Christ that we receive clear understanding of all the word of God. In John 15, verse 26, again, we read, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify of me. That is that the Holy Spirit will work in our hearts and our minds to understand where the Word of God is testifying that is speaking to us about our Lord Jesus Christ. What the Word of God tells each and every one of us about Jesus, and through Jesus we understand the Word of God. As Jesus conversed with the religious establishment of his day, he tells them of his place as the focus of all scripture. Now these religious leaders had a vast amount of scriptural understanding. They had memorized the word of God, yet their approach was carnal. They read the word of God, but they missed the entire point of scripture. They could quote it. They had it memorized. They knew Genesis, Leviticus, Numbers. They could, they could recite the histories and the genealogies. But they missed the central point of all the scripture, which is Jesus Christ.